it was really watching like the future meet one of the ultimate goats in a game. And that was just really cool to see. I love seeing moments like that. So. Welcome to We Need to Talk Now presented by at and I'm Alicia J, and I'm here with Ashley Nicole Moss. Hello, hello. Listen, before we get into the show, Alicia, you okay. and I are the girls. We know this. We can Absolutely. see Absolutely. I have constantly, especially in the summer, winters, I'm good. I got my routine down lock, especially when I go home to New York. I got my routine down lock. I have struggled for the longest time to find products that work well in a Miami summer. Because things don't always translate. The humidity is different. The air is heavier. And I'm not one to buy into like the celebrity hype of products because I don't really care. If it works, it works. And there have been a lot right. of celebrity products that don't actually work. Just want to put that out there. Mm -hmm. I've been seeing a lot of videos about Rihanna's new hair care line. I have her edge control. It's amazing. I got I can speak to. I was a little apprehensive about the curl, you know, products that she has, specifically this curl cream. Because I'm like, Rihanna's not a curly head girl. I don't know how she can like develop a product for something that's not her hair texture. I was a little apprehensive about it. I'm seeing all these videos on social of all these curly hair girls with different textures, 4C, 3B, 2A, like everything in between using this product. So I'm like, hmm, all right, I'm gonna try it. It's not that expensive. It's like 20 bucks, which is great considering what the market looks like now. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and use it. It is phenomenal. Woo, come on. Creme de la creme. Rihanna, I am sorry I doubted you. You I was going to say, girl. you should probably should never doubt her. I should never doubt you. My hair, I put it in this morning. I'm like, all right, a little free agency day. This is going to go real bad or real good. It went amazing. There's not an ounce of frizz on my hair. Every curl is... Rihanna, no, you are that girl. girl. You are that girl. I am sorry I doubted you. My Bayesian sister, I am sorry. Listen, <laughs> I'm about to... Don't trip. I'm about to run out right after this pot and get some. Okay. <laughs> I, mean, I do have a fresh wash and go and she's doing what she needs to do, but I Very need good. another product in my life. I'm telling you, about to, are you about to head down to NOLA? You need this ASAP. I already know. I'm about to put it right into the suitcase. Don't trip. <laughs> Don't trip because that humidity might have me looking crazy at there the She's go. Got Time Summit. I'm excited to go. But if y'all see me, you know, with a little bit of frizz, it's all right. It's yeah. okay. I hear that. Listen. But apparently I need to get this product. So uh, I won't have yes to Yes, you do. And all you curly hair girls out there, no matter what your texture is, I'm telling you, this product is the holy grail, the new holy grail. Rihanna, we bow down. We are not worthy. Just Listen, want to put that yeah. out there. If you want to send us a little extra, we could always do a hair test live on the pod. We'd be open to that. Just want to put that out there. Talk. Let's talk because <laughs> I think that we could work together. You know what I'm saying? That's not a shameless plug. We really mean that. In every sense of the word, let's go. Yes. Let's yes. Go. Well, another thing that we definitely mean is we want to connect with you every single week. So make sure that you subscribe, like, share, comment, do all of the things so that we can all be connected, all talk about all of the things that we talk about every week. Yeah. And and literally, it might be hair products, you know? I mean, we, we talk about it all here. So mm -hmm. Um, make sure that you stay connected. And if you are just listening to us on audio, which is great, we love that too, um, you can find us on your favorite podcast platform and just go ahead, get this code right here, do a little doop, 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 and you can get to everything that we have. So listen, the more that we connect, the more that we talk, the more that we can explore all the topics of this week. And this week is like, you know, no other, there's a lot to get into, right, Ashley? Yeah, definitely. So much to get into. And make sure you guys are subscribing, like, sharing with a friend who shares with another friend. That way we can keep the conversations going. And speaking of conversations, I feel like we got to talk about Diane Taurasi. We got to talk Simone Biles. We got to talk Olympics. We're getting closer and closer. We got to talk W. And uh, we got to talk about ourselves for a second. Well, we're going to dive into that. But first things first, let's start off with uh, Diane Taurasi. What, what we got, Alicia? Well, DT and Caitlin Clark, you know, it was a long awaited matchup because mm -hmm. DT had had some, you know, comments, some opinions. Which she um, does with most people. Let's just put that she does. It's, it's not just for yeah. the rookies, but, you know, coming into it, she had a lot of conversation 
around what the rookie should expect, right, coming into the WNBA. Um, but she also had a lot of great things to say, too. There's been so many videos that have popped up now that Caitlin and DT have met. You know, they've had their matchup finally where, you know, she gave a lot of praise to people, too. I think that people just picked up on a lot of the um, kind of more like real things that she had to say to rookies that people wanted to sensationalize. But mm -hmm. the matchup happened this past Sunday. Um, it was everything that I personally needed it to be. Um, it was literally seeing like one legend to a future legend, you know, match up, come together, meet each other for maybe, I don't even know if they've met actually, mm -hmm. but see each other on the court for the first time. Um, and it was, it was awesome. Like absolutely love to see it. There was a lot of respect. Um, Caitlin Clark called it cool to play against her. And one of those things, like when I think about when I played, like if I had played against Lisa Leslie, I would have lost my mind, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And so see, you know, playing against somebody that you grew up watching mm -hmm. and is still balling in the league too. Put um, that it, out there. Cause yes. she sometimes looks like she's 25 again. It's in, I don't know what's in her Gatorade bottle, but it's not Gatorade. <laughs> it, it sure isn't. <laughs> it sure isn't because per ESPN, they said that DT has played more games, 547 than the entire Fever starting roster combined, which was Insane. 461, which is so crazy. Um, and then Sunday was actually the largest age gap of all time between opposing and starting guards at 19 years in 225 wow. days. Wow. So it, it was a great matchup. It was everywhere. Um, Ashley, I'm sure you watched. What were your thoughts when you were watching them? Listen, first and foremost, AJ ain't nothing but a number, baby. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes. Let's not get too crazy. But um, we can I talk about that. Because I think that, I think that this, the past few weeks, you know, going into the W season, we're just very tumultuous and just very contentious and just not so much focus on just the beauty of where the league is and just where the players are and embracing the new generation, but also giving praise to the generation that has already been in it doing the work. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad, first of all, that those conversations, at least, you know, immediately have kind of died down a little bit. And we're really starting to focus on what's happening on the court and celebrating that. That's not to say that those conversations have been completely erased because they're still out there. But I think that this was just the reminder of just how cool this moment of time is in the W. It's the passing and the changing of the guard, rather. And that's not to say that DT is anywhere near retiring. She could, the way she looks, she could play another five years if she wants to. But it's just very cool to see, you know, the past essentially, the future, the slash present merging together and being on the court at the same time and just being in that space where we're seeing so many different levels of similarities, differences, and just different tiers of careers. And it's just a very cool time, whether you're a fan of a particular team or a particular player, it's just a time to celebrate what's witnessed, what's happening. And to me, that was bigger than just what the matchup and the final score was. It was really watching like the future meet one of the ultimate goats in a game. And that was just really cool to see. I love seeing moments like that. So. Yeah, moments like that. And also seeing somebody who has impacted the game so much be next yeah. to somebody who has changed the game as well. And is That's just true. like starting it off, you know, yeah. starting off their career. It's just really cool to see kind of like you said, the progression, right? Mm -hmm. um, and also just having both of their like star powers together too yeah. was an amazing thing to see after the game. Diana said that it's amazing what Caitlin's been able to do in her short career so far has been nothing but remarkable. The one thing that I really love about her, she's put in the work. She's put in the work. Even throughout her short WNBA career, it's been a lot of pressure, a lot of things thrown at her, and she keeps showing up and she keeps getting better every single game. So her future is super bright. And yeah. I just thought that quote wrapped it up in a bow. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, I just think that's really dope. And also, again, to your point, I think it just showcases what a lot of us already knew, but I think it showcases that to the majority. And that is being critical or having 
you know, an opinion that may not be the popular opinion. It's probably a realistic opinion. And nobody knows that better than DT when it's talking about, you know, um, the pressures of the WNBA and sometimes that not translating from the collegiate game and all the things that come with that and, and what the adjustment period looks like and how to have longevity in this league and X, Y, and Z. Nobody knows that better than she does. And I think that that game, that quote, and everything that surrounded the matchup, I think was just so important to show that you can have a very realistic opinion about what the difficulties are going to be for someone like Caitlin Clark and still have such a profound respect for her as a player, her as a young woman, and ultimately her as a pillar of movement when it comes to advancing the WNBA. It's not just about having one opinion or another. I think that people have really made it very much it has to be one or the other with Caitlin Clark and I don't think that's ever been the case so it's just great to see moments like this where someone who was quote unquote critical of her and I put that in air quotes for people who are listening on audio then go ahead and say look she's great she's going to continue to be great what she has done for the W has been amazing the pressure is just insane the way she carries herself we respect it and let's just keep playing let's just keep hooping and that's really what it's about. So I'm glad that this moment finally happened. So that maybe everyone can stop like with the think pieces and just let people play ball. That's that's my hope. It won't happen, but that's my hope. <laughs> Man, wouldn't that be great? But I would also say not only a realistic opinion, but a right one. Yes. When they right. came in, yeah, when they came in, they did have an adjustment period. That's all she was saying. So yeah. not only was she right, um, I mean, she was realistic, but she was also right. So. Yes. Just wanted to add that for sure. Listen, before we dive into a really dope interview we did with Amadi B, who Amadi Brooks rather, who is a phenomenal stylist when it comes to women's sports, we want to go ahead and shout out some other goats or the goat rather when it comes to gymnastics, and that is Simone Biles, honey, because she was just named to her third Olympic team on Sunday. She will be joined by a roster. That includes Suni Lee, Jade Carey, uh, Jordan Childs. The list goes on and on. And then on the track side, because we got to go ahead and give some love over there, um, we have to go ahead and shout out Cindy McLaughlin Leveroni, who did her thing and broke the world record in the 400 meter hurdles for the fifth time in her career. Not one, not two, not three, not four. But five, quick story. I tried hurdles once, wasn't good at it. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> busted my ass. It was very embarrassing. I only did it because there was a boy on the track team I thought was really cute. And he ran hurdles. And I figured if he could run hurdles and I can run hurdles, we could be a hurdle power couple. And well, we weren't because I was the weak link. So <laughs> being able to do that five times and then breaking a world record. I'm just absolutely in awe of Sydney. Just congratulations to everybody. Like I said, we're sending the best of the best over to Paris. So just congratulations. Truly, 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 truly. Well, and when you watch her, she is done before people are even in the frame. I know it's unreal. Like if I could have just had an ounce of that. I would have been with the, the hurdle power couple, but I digress. It's okay. I, things are working out just as they should. <laughs> you, you weren't able to hurdle that for a reason. We'll just put yeah, it like that. I wasn't able to get over the hurdle <laughs> in more ways than one. Well, another thing that I definitely need to shout out is us because why should we not? Yay. <laughs> uh, we Need to Talk has been nominated for the Best Black Hosted Podcast category in the People's Choice Podcast Awards. So we are over the moon Yay. about this. We appreciate everything that each and every one of you have done for us. And we just would like to ask you to please vote for us. We're going to put, um, it's podcastawards.com backslash app backslash sign up backslash. But we're going to actually put this in the description of the podcast below. So you'll have that just right there. But if you could just click and then you toggle down to the sports category. Um, there's also, a, um, you can just do a QR code right here too to vote for people that are watching us. Um, but just toggle down to that sports and give us a vote. We would really appreciate it. 
Um, we're really just thankful for where we're at. It's been amazing ever since we started the pod. Um, we're talking with you about sports every week and you guys have showed us nothing but love. So thank you so much and please vote. We're vote. very, very thankful. Um, it's just, again, we forget how new the pod is and yeah. sometimes how new pods can take a little bit of a while to gain some traction, but we've had some really incredible conversations on the show so far. We're going to continue to have those conversations, you know, the funny, the more serious, everything in between. We've had some amazing guests roll through, but most importantly, we're only in this position because so many of you are watching, liking, subscribing, sharing, whether that's on social, whether that's audio. And uh, we just really, really appreciate everybody rocking with us. And uh, we have a lot more in store, but thank you. And go vote. Tell your friends to vote. My mom has already voted like 12 times. So if Listen, there's 12 votes there, they belong to my mom. <laughs> both of our moms are on it because mine was like, how do I do this? I showed her. <laughs> He's been voting too. So they're just voting yeah. from home and we love you for it. Vote, 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 vote. Vote with our mother. Um, vote yes. with them as well. Add the votes. Join our moms in the crusade. Um, and speaking of joining, I alluded to a special guest joining us. And that special guest is WNBA stylist extraordinaire Amadi Brooks. Now I should actually say just women's sports stylist extraordinaire because she has also helped style players like Serena Williams working on magazine covers. And it was just so dope for us to sit down and speak to her, just hearing her story, hearing her hustle, hearing her grind and how she helps her clientele not only showcase their personalities through their clothes, um, but also how she allows them to be the best version of themselves. One of the things that I really liked from this interview that we're gonna roll in one second was that she said, look, not everybody is a heels girl. Not everybody is a sneakers girl. Not everybody is this, not, not everybody is that. It's about getting to know your client and making sure you bring out the best of your client. And I think that's really important, especially seeing how women's sports is becoming such a huge uh, talking point when it comes to fashion and individualism and authenticity. So um, without further ado, please welcome Amadi Brooks. We have a special special guest and that ding was just here because it's so special <laughs> we have a special guest today we have been wanting to talk to somebody who knows all about WNBA style inside and out and style period because you do more than just WNBA but we are here with the one and only Amadi Brooks thank you so much for coming to the pod thank yeah. you for having me hi hello hello well, you mentioned black owned brands and how important is that to you when you're styling to include black owned brands? It's so important to me. Um, it's one of the things I live by and that I, I, I take pride in is using my platform to highlight black owned brands and businesses and not a just black, but not now minority owned, women owned. I just feel like I was given opportunities to get to where I am. Um, and if I have a platform, I want to give other people opportunities as well. Um, and with all of the eyes on sports and fashion, like we've always known there was an intersectionality there, but now it's actually becoming mainstream and there's so many more eyes on it and it's getting so much more media attention. And, and if I can help a brand by putting a client in their clothing through the tunnel and, and it gets press and media, like that's huge. Um, I've done it all the time for big moments like Asia's ring, Ceremony opening night fit that was a black designer, HJNYC. That's Heather Jarrett. She's a young black designer too. Um, she's also dressed Sid for her ta ta uh, Tamron Hall show appearance. Um, Sid's like Sheila, the designer, the 90s hair fit um, that we did for Tunnel. That's also a black designer. So if I can, if I have the opportunity, I will, I will use it. And I think it's just about opening the door, keeping it open, and bringing people in, you know. I want to talk about the evolution of fashion and sports because I think on the men's side of things, the tunnel has become such a huge part of the game. And it's been that way for, I want to say, going on at least 20 years at this point after, you know, the whole oversized suit thing yeah. and Alice in the Palace kind of came and went. The individuality, you know, you think of Allen Iverson and how the whole just era of the early 2000s changed things. But when it came to the W, although it was being done, it wasn't highlighted in the way that it has been in the past few years. And obviously with this draft class and the way that they've been bringing it and all the extra eyes 
on the sport, on the league in general, whether good, bad, or indifferent, but that's a conversation for a different day. Um, I want to ask you, what has been your favorite part of this evolution, you know, watching it, being in it, and also just observing it as a fan and a fan of fashion and a fan of sport? Well, you know, I, I grew up playing basketball. I played ball all the way up through college. So just to see the growth of the game in general is fulfilling. You know, it, it's like I'm excited about it, whether I was a part of it or not. Yeah. Um, and I, I just love to see it. It's overdue. Um, and, you know, with that, like you said, comes the good, the bad. The, yeah. you know? <laughs> I, I am just excited to see this game get the attention that it's been deserving um on the fashion side it, it almost feels like well thank you for finally getting here like it's been <laughs> it's been time but it's also reminds me of like why i started this and that was when i remember first watching you know tunnels and orange carpets during all-star and i was just like i know this is not these girls' personalities, like they're, you know, they're gorgeous. Mm -hmm. They have different personalities that they that they should be able to feel comfortable enough to express through their clothing, and also like brands tap in. And at that time, I was not well versed or knew that like styling, being a stylist, was an option for this. But I did know I wanted to be a part of merging the two. Mm -hmm. So to be actually styling some of the top athletes and being a part of it and having brands wanting me to get their pieces on these these bomb athletes it's like such a full circle moment for me and it's i'm just grateful to be a part of it but also like i feel like this is what it's like uh, this is what was supposed to be coming down the pipeline anyway and so no matter if i'm still a part of it or not i'm yeah. just glad that it's happening is there been obviously we're talking about good bad everything kind of in the middle so yeah. when it comes to the evolution of, of the style aspect of the sport, of the league specifically, and just seeing how it's grown, there's also, you know, pushback. And there's also people who are kind of late to the party. And I think back to the interview that Law Roach did when talking about Zendaya and how there were, we're not going to name them, but there were some designers that mm -hmm. didn't want to dress her. And to this day, he's never put her in any of those designers because of how apprehensive they were to dress a new star, new actress, you know, right. all of those things. So have you dealt with any pushback or, and are you as petty as Laura Roach when it comes to, all right, so we never going to do that so-and-so in this again? <laughs> Cause I would get it if you would, I would not be mad at that at all. Um, yes. The, the <laughs> answer to your question. Absolutely. Um, this time last year, I'm talking about nose, nose after nose or, you mm -hmm. know, and, and it, I, you know, obviously we don't have to name names or whatever, but they just didn't, they just didn't see the value, I, I guess is what the answer was. But um, I'm not as petty. I, I have my moments. I have my moments, of course, that I, you know, a little pride kicks in, mm -hmm. um, but it is, it's such a switch of dynamics now. Like from literally this time last year, I'm having the brands reaching out to me. And it's so interesting because it's like, okay, you know, what's changed? <laughs> you know, we're still talking about some of the top of the top. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I just think it's a part of how culture works in general. You know, mm -hmm. you have to, you know, you got to take it in stride and know, like, it, it's a business at the end of the day. Um, and I can be selective, as selective as I want to be now. But it is interesting to to say the least, of the, the yeah. ones coming back around. And it's like, mm -hmm. okay, you see me now. They always spend the I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't forget, no. Right. But, <laughs> but literally, when we're speaking about kind of, you know, the changes and things that have happened, I feel like I absolutely love the looks that I'm seeing in the tunnel, but I think sometimes not all of the looks that are in the WNBA are represented what would you like to see more? Like what, what would you like to see the media cover more when it comes to these different looks that are in the WNBA? Um, I just, the, the beautiful thing about the WNBA is, is I think it probably is maybe the widest range of different fashions and personalities. I want to say like compared to other leagues and other, other sports leagues. Yeah. Um, so I, and one thing that I've seen 
talked about on social media and I've been asked about before in interviews is like the lack of representation of like more androgynous styling and like more masculine presenting um, athletes and their style. So, I mean, I would just love to see it across the board, you know, um, sometimes it doesn't always have to be the athlete that's in like the top brands or the athlete that's ne maybe necessarily the most popular right now. Like, let's make it about fashion. It's like, do we like the look, you know? Um, and also you don't have to like the look. It, it's just, I love that people, some people have stylists, some people don't. Like is everybody's just feeling more comfortable in expressing themselves and presenting themselves as, as who they are. Um, so I would love to see it regardless of who the athlete is or what they have on, but if it's fashionable, it's fashionable, you know? Yeah. Love and that, that was just, I love it too. And that was just a small part of the overall interview that we did. So head to the YouTube page and make sure that you watch the whole interview because it was really amazing. And one thing that I just have to say is that there are so many people that have catapulted women's sports and we'll, we'll talk specifically WNBA because that's what our focus was mm -hmm. that have catapulted it into where it is now. And you know, there's people who obviously have done it by play. There's people who've done it by marketing. Um, and there are people who have done it with style. You know, style has moved the needle in a lot of different ways. And sitting down with Amadi and talking about how she is styling and, and how the WNBA uses style um, mm -hmm. to its advantage in a lot of ways and how everybody has their own unique look and their own brand that they're they're also pushing with style it was just an amazing conversation to have and very yeah, important. I love I the conversation because you're seeing all the girlies now Angel Reese Cameron Brink two of my personal faves um you know I know I know she just got way very sad but Kaiser um you know so many girls in the league um just killing it and their individual style is showcasing but for me you already know my personal favorite my number one, and she was really who put WNBA fashion on the map for me, Skylar Diggins, Smith. I mean, Skylar has been doing it for as long as I can remember. And I remember she was one of the first athletes to have like Puma making custom fits for her and just really experimenting with her fashion and mixing, you know, uh, high fashion with athleisure and street fashion. And she's still killing it, still doing it. And I'm just glad that it's now not just one or two women in the league. We're seeing it with so many different women, so many different styles are being represented. And um, it's just a very cool time. So I absolutely love that conversation. We recommend everyone to go check it out. Um, and hopefully you find something that resonates with you in that combo. Absolutely. I know we talked a little tall fashion in that combo yeah. and that resonates with me. So I know girl, we saw your TikTok on um, about Target. Listen, Target, <laughs> holler at me. We're still, still waiting for the call. Still waiting for the call. But one thing that we have to call Ashley is Rookie of the Year. So we're going to have this conversation. We're going to have a vibe check. Real um, quick, before we dive into this, I just, wanna, I just want everyone to know the last time we had this conversation, we were not arguing. We were actually on the same no. page. <laughs> no, we weren't arguing at all. We every headline, which we thank you for watching the pod. Thank you. We, we do. Um, was like, we need to talk co-host argue about like, that was not an argument child. We were just talking. So we were having a conversation. Chit chat. Yeah. Yeah. We were definitely having a conversation and we're still going to have it because Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark, honestly, I mean, they are just coming for us every game, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we really cannot keep up with all of the amazing numbers that they are having both of them um, and the way that they're pushing the needles for both of their teams as well. Um, Angel has had 10 straight double doubles, which set a WNBA record, um, breaks Candace Parker's record, which is huge, especially when you think about the monster rookie year, legendary rookie year that she had. Mm -hmm. um, Clark almost had first WNBA rookie triple, triple, excuse me, double with 15 mm -hmm. points, 12 assists and nine rebounds. Um, you know, even in that last game that Caitlin had, they were saying she had a migraine. Um, I believe her coach said that. Um, and then, you know, she had to sub her out uh, during, you know, the final minute. So that's why people are saying, you know, it didn't really happen. Mm -hmm. So definitely on deck. Um, and Clark scored or assisted on 44 of Indiana's 88 points, which is crazy, right? So 
when you look at all of these numbers and when you look at what they're doing for their teams, you know, who would you pick right now, you know, for rookie of the year? It's so tough. So okay. Tough. So there's a few things to take into consideration here, right? I think that when you talk about rookie of the year, it's a season long award, regular season award. And you have to look at ha who has been doing it longer consistently. And that edge goes to Angel Reese because Caitlin Clark struggled a little bit earlier on in the season. She has since found her. And when I say struggled by Caitlin Clark standards, because her struggle was still better than some people's best. Right. But she was struggling. Um, Angel has been doing it more consistently. Some people will look at, you know, the make of a team. You know, who do you say has an edge and quote unquote, the better team? I don't know if I would give anybody quite the edge in that conversation. I think that they're somewhat similar for different reasons um, when you actually break down the make of the team. Um, and also our producer, Emma, just let me know that they're back to back and standing. So relatively having the same season so far, it really comes down to what you prioritize more, Right. For me, last time we had this conversation, it was Angel Reese. This week, I'm leaning more towards the side of Caitlin Clark. Next week, it go back to Angel Reese. They're neck and neck. It's between these two for Rookie of the Year. I think that the fact that Clark had a rough start and found her footing, and also she may get the first WMA Rookie Triple Double, will be a historic, historic, never-been-seen-before stat line, and I think that would give her a bump. Um, but... I don't know if I had to pick right now, even with Clark, with Clark not having that triple double yet under her belt, I would still give the edge to Angel Reese, not by much. Um, but I do think that if Clark can go ahead and secure that historic stat, I think that she then goes ahead and jumps up in the standings. So you think that right one now. stat would solidify it for you? I think because they're so close. And again, it depends on what part of the season she gets it, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say next game she gets that record and the remainder of the season, Angel Reese has a better season. I don't think that's the difference maker, no. But I think if she gets that and then continues to progress the way that we have seen her progress from the start of the season to this point now, then I think that that pushes her forward. But it's not just that that's the deciding factor. It's a multitude of things and it's how she finishes the season in addition to landing that record as well that I think would push her ahead. But that's why right now Angel Reese still has a slight edge over me for Kaylin Clark. Yeah, I would definitely agree Angel Reese. And it's ever so slight. Very right? slight. It's ever like so this. slight. Just like this. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. But what I would say is I think it is amazing that we're having to talk about an ever so slight edge for Ricky of the year. Mm -hmm. I love that we're going to be having this conversation for the whole time because they are not going to let up. They are relentless. Angel Reese is definitely, I believe Cheryl Swoop said, you cannot teach hard work and she's going to go out there and work every second that she's out there on that court. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Caitlin Clark does too. She, she works really hard for, for everything that she does. Um, but I just, I love that we're having this conversation because not a lot of people even had Angel Reese in this conversation at the beginning of the year. And she's showing everybody that I deserve to be in this conversation too. And I will not let up. I will be here. You will be talking about me. And I love, we'll I love that we're having this conversation with these two specifically, just because yeah. of how much history there is between these two going back to college, how much I feel like many people in the media have tried to pit these two women against each other, how one has kind of been, you know, made to be the savior and the other made out to be the villain. And that goes back again to college. There's just so much history between the two. And again, when I say history, I mean, just overall, I'm not saying these two dislike each other. So y'all not about to make that out there. I'm saying that surrounding these two has just been so much that it's just, this is kind of like their last laugh. Like y'all try to pit us against each other. Y'all try to make it seem that like one was better than the other. Y'all tried to make it seem this, tried to make it seem that. And look, we both in contention for the same award. So what are they going to say now? And I absolutely love, if I had to pick two players, two young women to be in this position, I would not have it any other way than it is right now than it would be 
between Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark, not only because they're exceptional and they both deserve it, but because of everything that has surrounded them going back to college, this is like the final laugh that both of them can get. And more so on the side of Angel Reese, because so many people have doubted her and questioned her in comparison to Caitlin Clark. Now it's like, okay, now what we hear. So I love this. Right. And I also love that they're just going to continue to show this to us. We're going to be having this conversation the whole time, right up until the end. I know it. I know it. And it's a conversation that I'm definitely glad that we're having. I'm glad that we're having it. And I also think that we need to pay attention to obviously how they do as individuals, Mm -hmm. but how they're impacting their team. Yeah. Because that is important. They're eighth and ninth right now. Um, I believe who's eighth and who's ninth. I had it in my head. I want to say the sky is ninth. Fever are eight. Sky Fever are eight. And the sky is ninth. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that is, is a component of it too, because, you know, they were brought on those teams for a specific reason. Both of those teams need to be reconstructed, you know, from the ground up. They all, they both needed help. And so, to see how these teams are kind of like crafting around them and how they're Mm -hmm. impacting the overall team, you know, whether it be Caitlin's assist that she's having to make the team better as a whole, or just Angel's leadership. She's been an impeccable leader this, Mm -hmm. this whole entire season. So um, just really pay close attention to that too, because that's important when it comes down to rookie of the year as well. So definitely pay attention to that. Congratulations to both women and the season is not done yet. There's a lot of basketball left to be played. So we're going to keep having this conversation over and over again until we crown a winner. But in the meantime, it is time for one of our favorite segments, and that is Connecting Changes Everything presented by AT&T. Now look, this week, instead of bringing you a topic in sports, we are going to be in a more festive mood and we're gonna talk about our favorite 4th of July tradition. So we're gonna switch things up on you a little bit. Get it, like I said, we're gonna put our festive hats on and get creative here. So 4th of July traditions, I would say, this is gonna sound crazy, that's the only time of year that I eat a hot dog. I'm not a hot dog girl. Maybe when I think I was, when I was a kid, I was, I don't eat pork. Also, when I found out like what goes into making a hot dog, it kind of freaked me out. And then I never ate them again. I'm more of like a burger girl, things like that. Maybe like a shish kebab. So I'm not really a big hot dog girl. But every 4th of July, I allow myself a hot dog, maybe two, just because I feel like it's just super, I don't know, 4th of july <laughs> I feel like there's going to be a day of the year that I'm going to allow myself a Frank, a glizzy. I don't know why people call them glizzies in New York, a glizzy. Well, in Brooklyn, at least, a glizzy means something drastically different. Um, I was so, about to say, it's yeah, not what I've means, heard. It means something very drastically different. So I'm, I've never got on the glizzy hot dog comparison, but whatever. Um, that's still, yeah. So that's like my tradition and fireworks maybe, but really the hot dog is like my thing. So, so my, my question is, there, there's many different variations of hot dogs. Okay. We can yeah. get into that. Uh-huh. But what do you put on your hot dog? I'm a simple girl. I don't like relish. It freaks me out. It's just relish is weird. Okay. Um, I can do sauerkraut depending on the mood. Um, relish just, is weird, but sauerkraut isn't. No, because I mean, again, sauerkraut depends on the mood also. Like I haven't had sauerkraut on a hot dog for so long. If we're going to be honest, I like a beef frank. Well done. I don't want any pink. I want it very well done. Um, slightly toasted bun. I'm good with ketchup. I don't need nothing else. Really, like maybe I'll dabble with some mustard too, depending on the type of mustard, because like that changes things too. It has to be the yellow mustard, not like the Dijon mustard, because that's weird with the ketchup. But I'm good. Like just ketchup, hot dog. Fun. We don't gotta get crazy. We don't gotta put beans and cheese. Nope, don't want any of that. Just keep it simple, nice and simple. Okay. Well, I know that everyone listening right now <laughs> has some things to say about this. So please, in the comments, put what you like on your hot dog, and also like feel free to tell Ashley a little bit about what she that puts on her hot dog because she said I, for all the people from Chicago, don't say ketchup, and I say ketchup. I'm a New York girl. That's how we do it. Ketchup. Just give me that. Chicago's coming for you. Chicago is coming for you. What about you? And I, What's also your... just, I Well, 
I have to ask one question, okay. Ashley, before I tell you what my tradition is. Okay. Why, what is it about the 4th of July that is like, hey, I'm going to break the hot dog thing. I'm just going to go ahead and indulge. I feel like everyone's barbecuing and then like, there's not, unless you're going to like an elaborate barbecue where it's like a full blown setup. Cause I've been to some really dope barbecues where there's like, you know, different types of chicken, barbecue chicken, fried chicken, different types of like macaroni, potato, like so many different options that like yeah. the hot dog is not really like on your radar. But for the most part, I'm going to like simple barbecues, like burgers, maybe some chicken, hot dogs, you know, chips, di- like simple stuff. So it's kind of like, I feel like if I'm going to do it, because it's not like I wake up on a random Saturday, like, like you know what? I think I'm going to get a hot dog today. Like, just I don't do it. You know what I mean? So I feel like if I'm going to do it, I should do it on the day that people really go in deep with the barbecue and just take a hot dog. <laughs> it's just okay. kind of. Listen, I'm here for it. I mean, that actually kind of leads to my tradition. Okay. Is that, you know, I'm not like huge on the 4th of July. I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm not, yeah. I'm not huge on it. But yeah. any moment that I can have barbecue at any oh, moment God. in time is a celebration. So yeah. that's what I, that is my tradition on the fourth is a barbecue with people that I love. That, love that. that is what I love to do. And as a matter of fact, unfortunately, I mean, I'm excited to go to this summit, mm-hmm. but I'm going to be at a summit. Um, mm-hmm. Swing Cash is having the She's Got Time Summit this weekend or well on the fourth, it's the third and the fourth mm-hmm. in New Orleans. So I'm not going to be able to do it that day, Mm -hmm. but I have like a whole, like I call them my family in Sacramento, which is where I would normally be Mm -hmm. um, on the fourth with all of my, my friends that I consider family. And we're going to have like a late celebration. So I'm excited about that. Um, We have a show. Because you'll get to do like a celebration with the fam in the Bay, right? Is that considered Sacramento? Well, Sacramento is not, Okay. All the people in the Bay don't come for Ashley. Sacramento is not I'm, necessarily I'm from the East Coast. In the Bay. <laughs> yes, but um, it's a North Cal- It's Northern California. Okay, so yeah. not the Bay. I apologize to the Yay area. No disrespect. But it, there's um, actually a big like conversation about that. So t- talk okay. about it in the chat if you guys want to drop something in there. We'll talk but, about it. We'll dissect that yeah. on the next show. But you get to like the Creole aspect of the Fourth in New Orleans is cool too because like they yeah. do their own little like version. And the food will be different, but it'll be cool. So it's like the best of both worlds, like a Creole 4th of really? July with a little bit of a regular 4th of July. Again, I'm like you. I'm not big on a 4th. I don't really care about fireworks like that. It's just like you get to look, it's like, ooh, ah. And then it's like, all right, there's that. Yeah. Um, it's not like New Year's where like you're celebrating going into a new year where it's kind of cool to count down and like that aspect's cool. It's just like happy Independence Day, yeah, but... We've been free for a while, so it's like... Well, we, we can also have a conversation about that. Listen, that's, we that's ain't another, a little bit free. That's a different That's show. another well, pie. We, we celebrated Juneteenth already. <laughs> <laughs> that's another pie. But what I will say, anybody who knows me, if there is food involved and the food is good, I'm great. Oh, anytime to eat. So, hey, yeah. there we go. Yeah. Here for but it. But looking, <laughs> looking forward to all the traditions and seeing what, how you guys celebrate... Um, and another thing that we're celebrating is the start of Wimbledon. And so yes. we're really excited. It just kicked off. Unfortunately, there was some news to kick it off. Sabalenka withdrew with a shoulder injury. And that's always tough. Like, you know, they've been preparing for this. And then all of a sudden, this powerhouse is out right at the beginning. But it does change the makeup of everything moving yeah. forward, right? So just part of sports. But unfortunately, had to withdraw because of that. And then um, Iga Sviatek. Uh, is playing on the hardest surface for, Mm -hmm. you know, like for Iga. It's the hardest Mm -hmm. surface. So um, has only made it to the quarterfinals in Wimbledon because of this. Well, I'm sure there were other factors, but Mm -hmm. that's one of the things that people are saying. So it'll be really interesting to see how that pans out. And then Coco Goff, let's go. We we love us some Coco. Um, She's looking to make her first quarterfinal appearance at Wimbledon this year. So, um, and we, we can't not mention Naomi Osaka who won her first round match. Mm-hmm. And it was the first match win at Wimbledon for her since 2018. So that's wow. huge. And something that has been really weird for me, Ashley, is this is the first Wimbledon without 
a I William know. sister since 1996. It's crazy. It it's is so crazy. crazy to think about. That just and goes it, to show how long they have been such a factor in women's tennis and tennis in general. But specifically when you talk about Wimbledon, how much their presence has mattered. Um, like it just, it's like a void that's there. It's just, it's very like surreal. It's very odd. Um, I kind of equate it to like, it's how the league's going to feel when LeBron's no longer playing. It's just like, that's kind of weird. Like, you know, where is he at? Um, yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's weird. It yeah. is really weird. And I think that it makes me sad for anybody who did not get to experience like, just like when they were in the thick of it, you know, yeah. like it was just so beautiful to watch and beautiful to see. And they revolutionized tennis. I mean, that is mm -hmm. we're not that's not even enough. Right. Saying that they revolutionized. tennis. Yeah. There's so many things that they did. And to be able to witness that was so amazing. And I just I hope that everybody who didn't get to experience that goes back and looks at how just phenomenal in in game changing both of them were not to say that they're not you know, who knows, like Serena could say, I'm coming back, you know, next week. And right. um, Venus is still, it, it, they're not done all the yeah. way, but I'm just saying um, to witness that in the way that we got to see it. I just wish that everybody was able to experience that because it was see, so monumental. I mean, the cool thing is, is you see parts of them in like Coco and Naomi. And I think it's cool too, for like that next generation of young women, specifically young black women to have, you know, icons in tennis that they can look up to and kind of feel the way that we felt about the Williams sisters growing up watching tennis. Um, it's cool for them to kind of have their own version of that, although they're not related. It's just cool for them to have women that they can see themselves in. So I think that's also something that's really dope to recognize that when one chapter closes because of the work that the Williams sisters did, not only on the court, but off the court, um, just the doors and the opportunities for kind of that next generation are so much more than they were for them. And you hope that Naomi and Coco and all the other amazing women in this sport will do the same so that that generation can have their own Williams sisters essentially to, to look up to. So I'm excited to see Coco, Naomi. I'm so excited for the fits. They be putting it on at Wimbledon. Yes, Listen, they do. when you talk about high class sporting events all right they be put we talk about the tunnel walk and all that stuff and sports here in the u.s love it great but you want to talk about fashion honey you talk about wimbledon they be putting it on like going yes. to meet the queen type fits amazing absolutely it's actually on my bucket list to go to Me one too. of the tournaments i want to go i already know what my fit would be like i want to do like a nice little like suit but with like a pleated skirt maybe a little hat some cat don't let me go to Wimbledon. I'm about to put it on. Just hey. We already have the outfits ready. Just we need the invite. So. Put me next to Posh and Bex. Just like I'll talk to her about the Spice Girls, how she just like influenced my life. Just listen. Don't let me get to Wimbledon. It's going to be insane. I just want to put that out there. We're ready. Ready. Ready <laughs> as ever. Well, you know, I hate to say this, but that brings us to the end of the pod. We had a great, amazing conversation today, as we always do. And as always, thank you guys for your support. Remember to vote for us. Yes. Remember to vote for us. The link is below. And you could get this QR code right here. Um, for those of you who are just listening, it's in the description. So please vote for us for this amazing nomination that we got. Um, and thank you guys. Seriously, thank you from the bottom of our hearts, because it has been amazing since we started Wear your heart. See? <laughs> Still there. I'm not even trying, but I do have those same hearts for you guys, just so you know. <laughs> but thank you so much. Um, thanks in advance for voting and thanks for the support. Um, and, you know, as always, we are going to be right here on We Need to Talk Now, presented by AT&T next week. So stay tuned in. Bye.